Awo, Shalom, Rastafari, Shana, Tova, Sumu. He was listening to the blowing of the shofar, the blowing of the ram's horn, which is proper to do for this particular day, which is known as the Zikarona Teruah, as well as the Yom Teruah, the memorial of remembrance of the teruah, the shofar, the trumpet, as well as the day of trumpet. Now, we just touched on certain areas of scripture um, in the New Testament concerning trumpet. And stay tuned when we also touch on the incense, the incense as well, or the aishans as we as Hebrew, Beta, Rastafari, Israel, know it. Now, here we want to touch on the, the Yamin, Noraim, or the days of awe, the days of awe. And we was at Revelation chapter 2. Now, I know we had um, had to first, as it says, uh, to rightly divide the word of truth. So, if you've been following this series, so this is a part of a, of a series. And we touched on it in the beginning of the series. And now we're at the point we have to touch on other matter, such as trumpet, and to better explain scripturally the connection. Because what we find is that in the Jewish or the Hebraic sense, there is keys that need to be acquired to open the door of our messianic or Christian understanding. So the two actually go together. Therefore, Holy Ethiopia had it right in its Judeo-Christian sense. And this is half of the story that hasn't been told. And this is our divine heritage, my brothers and sisters, especially my Rastafari brothers and sisters, because all this may seem to some at first to be strange. But if it is for them, if they are able to receive, then they will receive the half of the story that hasn't been told to them. And this half of the story is the mystery of God in Christ. So this particular holy day, this particular high holy day, and this particular Shabbat as well, this Ras Hasana or Rosh Hashana, it begins the ten days of awe that culminates in what is known as the Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. Now earlier we touched on some of the Jewish or the Hebrew writings that basically makes the connection with some of the elements and when we look at these elements, as they are connected, for example, um, the shofar being traditionally blown each morning for the entire month of Elul, which is the month that precedes the month of Tishrei, the sixth month, the, and this now is the beginning of the seventh lunar or Hebraic month of 
Tishrei, but during the entire month of Elul, the shofar is traditionally blown, preceding Rosh Hashanah, preceding the Ras Hashanah. Now, the sound of the shofar, it, what is the intention of the sound of the shofar, which we have been seeking to have our brothers and sisters hear, and we don't know if they've been hearing it very clearly, but we hopefully will post another video where one can hear it in its full in its full um, resolution, in, in other words. The intention now of the shofar, and the shofar, we have to qualify the shofar. The shofar is the ram's horn, the ram's horn, or the horns of Sobek, the horns of Sebek. And yes, these are the horns straight out of ancient Egypt, out of Egypt, or out of the mysteries that our Coptic and Hebrew brother Moshe or Musa, the lawgiver, was familiar with or learned in as Acts of the Apostle chapter 7 verse 22 to 2 makes it very, very clear. And he was mighty in word and in deed. So these are all very clear hints that is giving the faithful who will study and show themselves approved. So this too is a disciple lesson. This this too is a is a discipleship lesson that needs to be learned by each of the Deca Mesamorit. Each Deca Mesmur. Deca Mesmur means disciple. And Deca Mesamorit would be to say disciples as a collective group. Now, the etymology of Dekam is more is interesting as well, and um, we'll touch on that. But the intention of the shofar, the ram's horn, is to awaken, to awaken the listeners, to awaken the listeners from their slumber, from their sleep, and to alert them, to put them on the alert that there is a coming judgment. It's like a, a shout, judgment, judgment. This is, this is to wake ones up, so ones wake up from their sleep, and ones wake up from their slumber. Now, in some of the Orthodox Jewish and some of the conservative Jewish uh, communities, they don't blow the shofar on Shabbat. They don't blow the shofar on Shabbat. But it would be good to blow the shofar on Shabbat, at least for I and I and I. Now, in the period leading up to the Yamim Anorayim, which is Hebrew for the days of awe, the days of awe, there are what's known as penitential prayers or like repentant prayers. They are known as the the selachot, the the selachot, the selachot, and these, these selachot or penitential prayers are recited in our Ethiopic Tawahido Rita Haimenot, or the true faith, the true Ethio Hebraic Orthodoxy. We also have similar. And the root, actually, the original penitential prayers. And it's hope that we will be able to share this with ones as well. But there's certain psalms, certain psalms as well, that are appropriate for this particular time. Now, the ten days of awe. Let us touch on Revelation where we were. All right? And... Picking up from where we were, we already discussed about the seven churches, what the seven churches signify, the seven church ages, you understand, the seven different ages of the messianic movement that became known as Christian or Christian movement. And then the first message was to Ephesus, and Ephesus was the church, and we explained what church meant, church is ekkalio, from the Greek word ekalio, which means out calling, and the ekalio, 
became the ecclesia. And the ecclesia is what we know as the church, the called out ones, because of their faith in our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, many of the early first century Hebrews and Jews, they were persecuted. So therefore they had to come out of the Mikorab, which was the synagogue, and they had to worship and, and pray and to study and elsewhere. They had to go elsewhere. So their their coming together was called and was known as church in the English sense, but more correctly the ecclesia, because they were the ecaliod ones that were ecalio. Remember the Moshiach said that they shall they shall kick us out of the synagogues. They shall kick us out of the Mikorah, the Mikorah Boj. They shall kick us out of the synagogue because they had refused to accept and acknowledge the Moshiach as being Yehoshua or Yeshua, whom is known today as, in the English way, Jesus or Jesus Christ or Bamarinya. Jesus Christos. All right? Now, this is the church, the first church, and the first message in Revelation is the church that's at the end of the apostolic age, when, when the apostles had already laid or built on that foundation of the Moshiach, that they had built on the foundation of Jesus as Christos, of Yeshua, as Moshiach. Therefore, the apostolic was called the Apostles' Age, or the Age of the Apostles, had come to a close. And this is the first church. In other words, that dispensation after the last of the apostles had fallen asleep, or had gone asleep, as we discussed in First Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, the church age or the ecclesia of Ephesus began. And the main message is that the first love was left, that they had left their first love. They had gone away from their first love. And this is a very important message. Please stay tuned. The Sama'ab were worded, were manifested, Kedus, Ahadu, Amlak. So it begins to the church, or to the angel, rather, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Bamarinya. Johannes Arai Rafa Hulet Kuter and Demilo Befesona Wadalo de Beta Christiana Mela Aka and Di Bele Saf Bek and the Jew Sabatu Nakawakabeta Yazoa Besabatu Ma Yawarka Mekarazo Chamekakel Yemiedo and Yilal. Verse 2, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Kuterahulet. The Milo Serahinna, the Kamehinna, the Gistin Maukalo, Kufuoch Nema, the Titagas, and that Titilla, and the Huma Sayonu, Awariata Nena, Yemi Lutuna, Mara Mare, Hesetenu Chahono, and again. Yahachoaukaloam. 
Now, verse 3, source, verse 3 says, And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Kutar sauce. Paga sahimala sila sime ma bila zenata ala de kamehima daru gina yama nekis bishinagara aling yek edama wina fikrihina tita halina. Now, I actually read uh, Arat, verse 4. So let's deal with verse 4. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So now, in the very earliest period of the Messianic movement, which the world calls Christianity, or Christina, the early church, after the apostle, the apostolic age was over, the early church now, which was the first church or the church, the first church age of the church of, of, of Ephesus, they had already left their first love. Now, it behooves us to, to ask, what is or what was their first love? What was this first love that they had left? Now, the scriptures does not clearly state at this point what their first love, but if we would understand a couple of key and significant facts, and therefore these can be factors, right? Ande, Ibakachu, one moment. Mm. If we will understand a couple of key and significant facts, that the first church or the, or the early church was Hebraic. The first church or the early church was Judeo. It was a Judeo, a, for lack of a better word, a Jewish or a Hebraic foundation to the first church. If we would go through Hawari Apollos and the Apostle Paul, if, excuse me, if we go through the other apostles and even our Adonai Rasul, even our Lord Himself, Yahushua Ha Moshi, or Ha Moshiach, if you please, Jesus Christos Getach. He also is Hebraic and Jewish, and, and His teaching has the true foundation of Judaism. In other words, Christ, the Messiah, or Jesus, our Black Lord and Savior, was a Jew. Not so much like the Jews of today, but the fundamental essentials of his way of life was based on what we know as Judaism and as original Judaism. So if there's anything right in modern Judaism, then it's reflected in the Moshiach and is reflected in the early church. If there's anything wrong as well in modern Judaism, it's also reflected in the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Just to understand that. So when it says that verse 4, that he says, Nevertheless, I am somewhat against thee. The somewhat, as you look in uh, um, your Bibles, it might be italicized. And if it's italicized, then that is good because it's showing you that that word was added in to make the translation have a better flow in a sense. But if we would read it without the italicized words, it would read like this. And nevertheless, I have against thee. I have against thee. And this is literally Bamarinya. This is literally how the Metaf Kedus of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haila Selase, this is how the Metzhav Kedus actually reads and would be translated with his Darugin. Yemanekasi, 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 
I have. So if you look at the King James, it's nevertheless, I have. Then they add the italicized word somewhat. But take out the somewhat, and you will have the true sense. Nevertheless, I have against thee, because thou hast left. Thou hast left thy first love. That you have left, you have forsaken your previous love. Now, what was the previous love of the early church? See, the previous love of the early church was the feast, the feast, was the Shabbat, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, was the festivals. And understanding these things now in and through the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. But, unfortunately, the early church, or the church that, that succeeded, in other words, the apostolic age, had left their first love. And this is the key of that first love. Because you've heard a lot of people probably talk about this first love, and it can be interpreted in many ways. And in some ways, it probably has a relevancy to it. But the key and the essential sense that this was intended is according to what we just shared briefly with you and just revealed to you just there, that the first love was the true, the true Judaic the true Judaic roots of the early church. And interestingly enough, the only, one of the, one of the few, if not only churches that maintained this up until very recent times was the Ethiopic church or the Ethiopian Tawahido Beta Christian, you understand, or the, or the Ritua Hymenot, the true Orthodox faith. Church of Tawahido, Beta Christiana, Ze Ethiopia. They maintain the Judaic roots, keeping Shabbat, keeping the seventh day Sabbath, and gathering on the Ihu the first day, as it was custom of the apostles to do. Now, if we go to verse 5, it says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. So already at this early stage, the early church had fallen, had fallen, or was falling, we can say from grace, but had fallen. This is why he says, remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen, and repent, and do the first works, and do the first works. This is the key for us as Hebrew, Beta Arastafari Israel. This is the key. The first works, the original works, the root, the foundation, or else I will come to thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place except, except or unless thou repent, unless you return, unless you have a metanoia, unless you have a change of mind. Kuter. That's a heavy word right there. He says, I'm going to take your candlestick from its place. I'm going to take your illumination. I'm going to take your light. In other words, spiritually, they would be in the dark. And when we study Christianity and, 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 and the churches, the early churches, and, and we see what the true history has been, we, we can clearly see that this Ephesus or Ephesus age, Ephesus, Zemin, truly was that early stage. And here the Moshiach in this 
book of Revelation is revealing to that first church age. But now, here's what it says in verse uh, uh, Siddis. It says, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitanians which I also hate. He said, but, but this that early church has, that it does what? That it hates the deeds of the Nicolaitanes. Now, who and what are the Nicolaitanes? The Nicolaitanes. Now, we will have to understand this, the name. Like we've been stating, the name is very, very important. What's in a name? People, places, things, ideas. Are in the name now. The the footnote in the Schofield Study Bible is very good. It says it breaks down the word in in in, in the in the two parts. Nicolaitanes, or some would say Nicolaitans, are from Nika Nika or Nico, and um, Laos. Then Nico it means to conquer, and Laos means the people or the laity. But literally, Nico means to conquer the unread, the illiterate people. In other words, conquer the people who cannot read. You see, conquer the people who cannot read. So what we find was done in early Christianity, and it was done at an exceeding level in so-called Romanism, is whitewashing of pictures and using pictures to replace scripture study and, and, and teaching of the Bible. So here we have the root, one of the roots of the Nico, or one of the, the, the bad fruit of the Nico Lyo or Lyotanes. There is no ancient authority for a sect of the Nicolaitanes. In other words, we can't find any sect of people that were called Nicolaitanes or Nicolaitans. Now, Schofield says here, if the word is symbolic, it refers to the earliest form of the notion of a priestly order or clergy. In other words, it refers to the earliest notion or idea of a priestly order within, within the messianic movement, where there be a, a set-aside clergy, which that is contrary to the foundation that has been laid by the Moshiach. You understand, by the Moshiach. I was even thinking, and some had even suggested, should I and I call ourselves a Rebbe, Rabbi? But though it's a temptation, it does not seem as though that would be right, because that's another way of setting. This is what we call of Wendem Yado. In other words, we are Brother Yado. Even via our Aras ship, is subordinated because if we are in a commonwealth, then we are like Ross, Ross's, I'm a Ross, my Rastafari brother is a Ross as well. So we both are Rosses. So when we come together, especially in the Beta Rastafari, we are Wendem. We are Wendemoch. We are brethren. But when we go out there to the world, well, to the world we are Ross this and Ross that. So understand there's an order already. But now to create a priesthood, a notion of a priestly class or a so-called clergy, this is what divided an equal brotherhood. This is what divided the early Christian brotherhood. So that's another sign and example of them going away or going astray from their first love. Matthew chapter 23 and 8 into priests on one side and laity on the next side. Into priests who could read, you understand, and understood the scriptures, and the laity who could not read. Laity basically refers to unlettered people, the unlettered, or in Catholicism they call them the vulgar, the vulgaris uh, uh, mobile. Or mobilists, the the vulgar mob, the vulgar crowd, or the the vulgar people who who could not read. Instead, they gave them pictures and a lot of make believe along with the pictures. And this is what people believe, and this is where the early church, you understand, had 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 gone astray. We can say in the warning from Christ or the admonition that Christ gives in Revelation chapter two is accurate. 
So what in, 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 in Ephesus, what in Ephesus, Ephesus was deeds, was deeds, as we see in verse 6. What was deeds in verse 6 becomes, as we go further to Pergamos, you understand, the Pergamos church age, then it becomes a doctrine. Then it becomes the doctrine of the church. So they went astray by certain deeds from their first love and the original apostolic foundation. And then later on, this going astray became a doctrine or a vain tradition. And we find that in Revelation 2 and 15. Now, the verse that we just um, read right here, verse 6, let us hear this Bamarinya. It says, Negar again, um, ye alle in a degmo yem allowing a yenik olawian in a serat ella to Halena. It says, But this thou hast, and but you do have this, but you do have this negar again, ye ye alle ye alle. This you have, but this you have. And it says, you have this, that you hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitanes, which I also hate. You hate the deeds of those who are trying to divide the Wendemoch, the Wendemamachnet, the brotherhood, into a priest class and a laity class. In, in other words, into a learned class. And an, and an ignorant, make-believe, believer class, in a sense. Because we are all supposed to be, you understand, a, a priest kings. Revelation lays that out in the first chapter right there. And this is the fulfillment of what we have in the Belui Kidan, you understand, of that kingdom of the priest age. Not into priests on one side and laity on the next side. No, 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 no. Verse 7. It says, he that hath an ear, he that hath an ear, it says, make him hear. Let means prevent, so we replace let usually with make. Make him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst, which is in the midst of the paradise of Ha Elohim, Baruchu, in the paradise of God. Kutara Sabbat, Menses, Le Abiate Christiana, Tia Mila, Wina Joro, Yaloa, Yisma, Dilla Leneshao, Be Egezi Ab Herra Genetakalo, Kahuetaza, Fandi Abella, Iset Awalo. Indeed, Bella, indeed, Bella, ka hewat zav, from the hewat zav, from the tree of life. Now, we don't have to really go too far from a Hebraic or a Judaic idea to understand properly what the tree of life is. But in the Nicolaitanes version and the Pergamos perversion, they had lost the access. This division of the priests and the clergy, the, the clergy on one side and the laity, the the lettered folk and the unlettered folk, the scriptured folk and the unscriptured folk. You see what happens right there? The access to that tree of life, which is in the midst was effectively denied to them, which is another interesting point, and we will hope to touch on the Ethiopic uh, Kebele or the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah, you understand, from an Ethiopic Talmud or the Ethiopic Timharit. But now it's interesting that this closes this part. Now as we go to the message to Smyrna, which is the second uh, messianic period, it's the period of great persecutions. This is the period of great persecutions to roughly A.D. 316. Now, in this very time, our patron um, Kedus, the patron Kedus, 
therefore, I and I is Caduceus Georgis, or the one who is known to the world as St. George. If you know anything about St. George, he was martyred in this particular period of time. His story is very, very interesting. In the, in the, in the study, we had, um, cause we, once, we, we knew that well, George is, uh, St. George is, is the patron saint of, of, of Toby or Holy Ethiopia as well as of, of England through the black um, nobility or the original um, black Britons actually brought that idea front and center, but it's still good that it's observed in some sense of the truth today. But we want to know, who, who was this Caduceus Georgis? Was he a real person? Is he really a saint or a holy one? as we all are supposed to be Kedusan. We all, as every Christian is supposed to be a Kedusan. So to hear a Christian say, well, I'm no saint, it, it is a, an oxymoron. But, but basically, it is part of the fruit, the bad fruit of the Nicolaitanes that has uh, taken from the laity, the unlettered folk, the scriptures. You have to remember that for us as lost sheep of the Beta Israel, for Ethiopian Hebrews as blacks in the Americas, that it was for forbidden, or as they would say, verboten, you know saying, for us to read the Bible. And as soon as black people did start to read the Bible, they immediately recognized that what's in this Bible is talking about us. This is speaking about us. We are these Hebrews or Jews or Israelites. That became very clear. So, therefore, the white man's attempt to stop slaves or, or niggers or blacks, because we lost our name and the, the byword is nigger or negro, from reading the scriptures, it, there, there, was, there was motive or malice of forethought in that. They understood exactly who we were. But here's the key. They're not to restore to us what our name is. We are to restore to ourselves what our name is. We are to repent and to turn. So these 10 days of awe, this is what we're coming up to right now, these 10 days of awe are very important. There's a significance that even is found here in the book of Revelation, that without this understanding, both the Jews who don't read and study and receive New Testament are in the dark, and the Christians who don't study um, true Judaism and, and study the Hebraic root, they are also in the dark. And see, the only one that wins is the God of this world, who is the devil, Satan, not our God and Father, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. The Bible tells us the God of this world. So we have to understand these details. Because they say the devil's in the details. We need to understand the details. So, here is the great persecution that begins the period known as Smyrna, uh, roughly 316 A.D., and this is roughly around the time that um, Caduceus Georgis, St. George, was martyred, uh, roughly around, I think, in the period of time of Diocletian, you understand, roughly around there. Now, here... Verse 8 says, And to the angel of the church, the called out ones in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Kutera, kutera cement. Besamara ne sima wadalo da bita Christiana mel aka and di hibeles af moto yenebro yawimma yehono fitan yawinna macharashawa in di yalal. Verse 9. I know thy works, I know your works, and tribulation, and poverty. Seems like some things haven't changed. But thou art rich. Amen. And I know the blasphemy, it says, 
of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Shaitan or Satan. Kuteram Zetain, verse 9. Mekrahinna dehinetihin naukalo negergina baletegane. Yes, it anima machber nacho and ji. I who the sayonu, I who nen yemilu, yemia sadabutina sidibau kaloa. Now, this is very important. This right here is important because it says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. See, the blasphemy of those who say they are, are Jews and are not were those so-called Jews during that early period that did not receive the Moshiach, that did not accept the Moshiach in Yehoshua. They claim to be Jews or, or Judahites. And Judah, Yehuda, Yehuda, Yehuda means the praises of Yah. But apart from our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, Yehoshua, what praises could they have outside of Adonemnu? So this is the direct meaning in the context of the time to those who say they are Jews and are not, but were the synagogue of Satan. Because remember, the Jews who had crucified Christ, not all Jews crucified Christ. Let's be very clear on that. And let us also be clear on the true identity of the Jews or the Hebrews. You see, so when we put it into proper context, we are really looking at black people in the original sense of it. But all Jews got the stigma because, especially from this early church age, got the stigma because of these particular words, especially as they were misunderstood among the Goyim or among the Gentiles, mainly the so-called white and the European Christians. And therefore they persecuted black Hebrews as well as white converted Jews, even straight up to the period of the Holocaust. We have no problem saying that the Holocaust, based on the evidence that we've seen and that has been proven to us, this was a crime against humanity. But how could they ignore the Holocaust that was going on in the Chopia. How could they ignore, you understand, this, 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 this Holocaust by the very same fascist, Nazi, anti-Christ, anti-God disciples of Lucifer, uh, Satan is more appropriate. You understand? In fact, you compliment the Satanists when you call them Luciferians. Really, they are Satanists. You understand? Because Lucifer basically means light bringer. The real one who brings illumination is our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Know In and through the person of Moa Anbesa, the Imma Negeda, Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haila, Selase, Siyume, Giziab, Negus, Neges, the Ethiopia, and I and I, the Rastafari, his children who are preaching and proclaiming the good news of Haile Selassie, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. So, verse 10 is now we finally get to the 10 days of awe, and you're going to hear it. Now listen, and what's interesting is that this is, <laughs> isn't this interesting? This is verse 10. So, second the second chapter of Revelation 2 and 10 is where we find the 10 days of Or. And the 10 days of Or begin on the Rosh Hashanah, the Zikaron Teruah and the Yom Teruah, or, or the Day of Trumpets. In the 10th verse it says, Fear none of those things, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil, or Diablos, 
the, the, the slanderer shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful to death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Kutera Aser Litik Abalowa Yalahina Makara Tifra In Ho In Dita Fetanu Diabolo Sakananta Nando Chachuna Bewahinia Liagabachu Alo Aserk and Mamakarana Tik Abalachu Is Kamoteresa yetamen hum ye hewet ne makalila setalo. Now, this is this is this is very, very, this is very, very significant here, brothers and sisters. Because not only are the ten days, uh, uh, ten days of tribulation mentioned here, not only that. But it's also in the 10th verse. It's in the 10th verse that we find the 10 days of tribulation. Now, what is the connection with the Yamim Norayim? The connection is clear. The connection is obvious. Because, see, in these 10 days, let, let, us, let us see if we can bring this up. In these particular ten days, you understand? In these ten days, let us see if we have um, more on these ten days here. Um, in the ten days. Okay. Now, in the Hebraic thought, Rosh Hashanah is the most important judgment day. The Rosh Hashanah is the most important judgment day on which all the inhabitants of the world pass for judgment before the blameless creator. As sheep pass for examination before the shepherd or the great shepherd, the shepherd of their souls. Now, the Talmud or the Judaic Timharit, the Judaic teaching, it states in tractic, the tractate on Rosh Hashanah that there are three books of account are open on Rosh Hashanah, wherein the fate of the wicked, the fate of the Kufuach, the fate of the righteous, the Tzadikan, and the fate of those who are in an undecided or an intermediate class, what we call the middle region, you understand, are recorded. Now, the names of the Sadiq Khan are immediately those who are Sadiq, you understand, those who are Sadiq Khan, their names are immediately inscribed in the book of life and they are sealed lahayim. they are sealed to life this is the significance of also stating at and during this particular time stating lahayim lahayim is so when we say that when it said let in our also bamarinya in them hark it is it has been said especially during holy times of holy Ethiopia, let a nawal, let a nawal, for your health, you understand, which in a sense also can refer to lachayim, and lachayim mean to life or to live, lehiwet. Now the middle class, you see a lot has been said on the middle class, they're looking at it in an economical sense, but the blameless Creator, our God Father, and the God and Father of our, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, He's also looking at it in economic sense. 
because economy means managing a household. And we all who live on this planet and are part of this humanity have a, have a management responsibility. How are we stewarding the earth? How are we taking care of each other? It's like every day we hear of war, crime, and violence, and murder, and mayhem, and death. Every day, not to life, but to death. Now, those of the middle class, they are allowed, in this period of time, a respite. Or we can say they are allowed some sort of a reprieve until Yom Kippur, until the Day of Atonement, to repent and to become a Sadiq, to become members of the Sadiq An. Now, let us understand this, that those who are of the undecided, those who have not decided firmly for or against the good news of the King of Kings, and his Moshiach, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ, they are allowed during these ten days, you understand, a respite until Yom Kippur. Now, on Yom Kippur, or Yesar Yet Ken, Bamrinya Yesar Yet Ken, which is the Day of Atonement. They have to decide. It's a judgment day. You understand? If they repent now, that means have a change, a metanoia, a change of heart, a change of mind. Instead of being wishy-washy, they become for the King of Kings and His Christ. They become for God and the Moshiach, not against Jah and His Moshiach. And they become a Sadiq. They become a Sadiq An. They become members of the Sadiq An. Now, keep that in mind because the Sadiq are the righteous by interpretation in the Taragumu, right? Now, in the New Testament, it speaks of this righteousness. In, in other words, Hawari Apollos, he goes on to explain and to teach in, in great, even Talmudic detail on how the Moshiach fulfills, you understand, fulfills the will of God according to that which was spoken through the prophets. And he speaks on this becoming righteous that it's not our self-righteousness. It's not because of our works, you understand, that we gain this righteousness. Because the righteousness is a sort of a legal status. It's not something we can earn. It's a, it's a certain legal status, but this legal status is only acquired by receiving and admitting in or having faith in, you understand, in other words, developing, gaining, and receiving, and, and, and growing the imnet in the Amen. In other words, having that faith in the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But, on the other hand, the wicked, what about the wicked? The wicked, they are blotted out of the book of the living. They are blotted out of the book of the living. Now, there's something very, very important about this because they are blotted out of this book of the living. Let's go to Psalms, if we will. We're just about to conclude an hour in this particular teaching, and there's more, if y'all wills, that he has put on my heart and my mind to share with my brothers and sisters, and of course the mothers, um, that we want to, want to touch on. But we want to at least fill up this particular hour. We have a, a couple more minutes in this hour. So let us uh, touch on 29, uh, 60, 69 and 29. 69 and 29. When we go to the psalm, the Mesmora Dawi. Psalm 69, and we go to verse 29, it says this, verse, uh, actually in, 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 in um, the Western Bible, it would be verse 28. There's a difference of numbering. In fact, um, there's a book, let's, let's, let's do this right here. This particular, um, this particular, this is an update. This is a particular update that, um, 
of uh, the Mesmora Dawit, the Mesmora Dawit that has been annotated and footnoted as well as it's in English. It's a parallel Bible. It has the English and the Amharic, and it has some very important notes and footnotes and, and additional material in it. And um, we're pleased to present this. Um, unfortunately, the course of printing it and, and the size of the book, if you look at the size of the book, it is a good, it's a, it's a very good sized um, book and has some very important study notes in it as well, where it touches on some of the difference in the numbering between the Hebrew and the Ethiopic and, and, and some, some important basic facts concerning concerning um, Psalms and we call this particular book the Amharic the Amharic Psalms of David right and the English King James Version and this has been produced in fact this particular edition right here is um, the Jubilee is the Jubilee um, edition. This is the Jubilee year edition. So um, we will highly advise and recommend one's investing and getting a copy of, of, of this particular um, Mesmura Dawit. So hopefully we will have an opportunity to talk more on that. So let's get this verse ready. So it will be actually verse uh, Psalm 69 and 28. If you're looking in the Hebraic, um, the, 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 the Tehillim, the Tehillim, it will actually be verse 29. But most of us are looking in the King James or King James later Bible. And verse 28, let me just highlight this right here. Verse 28 says this. Verse 28 says, let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the Sadiqan, and not be written with the righteous. So, so here we are. We can put together both the the Old Testament Blue Kidan and the Judaic ideas and concepts that are related to Yom Kippur, the ten days of awe. Um, the Yom Teruah or the, the Zikaron Teruah, which is called the Rosh Hashanah as well. Now, keep that in mind, make a note of that, and just return, if you will, to um, Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, verse 11, just to complete this uh, Yamim uh, uh, the the Yami Ma Norayim um lesson that we're on. So at verse um verse Asaraan verse eleven it says, Men says Labiata Christianata Yamilo no Joro Yalo Yisma Dilla Yenesawa the Hulatenya Mota Aya Gwadama and the Targum the translation is, he that hath an ear, he that hath an ear, make him hear what the spirit, the menfest, the ruach, what the menfest, the ruach, the spirit, I would say this is a spiritual, it's a spiritual matter, what the spirit saith to the churches, what the spirit saith to all of those who are called out. All of the called out ones. He that overcometh. He that overcometh. Not one who is overcome, but to the one who overcometh. He that overcometh shall not be hurt. Shall not be hurt of what? Shall not be hurt of the second death. So we can see how this whole idea is very much and very well wrapped up and connected both from the Judeo sense and in the Christian or the Messianic sense. And now we can really see the significance and even be able to properly interpret Yehohannes Rai 
or the book of the revelation of Yah's grace. So, once again, my brothers and sisters, we hope to touch on some more during this particular time. Remember, we have 10 days, there's 10 days of awe. There's the Yamim uh, Norayim, these 10 days of awe. So there's much more to touch on. Please stay tuned. And once again, um, Shana Tova, Shana Toba, and uh, Melka, Ibrawiyawi, Ibrawiyawi uh, Adisamet. In other words, uh, beautifully good, happy Hebrew New Year to you all, my brothers and sisters of the faith of the King of Kings and his Christ. So once again, Shalom Rastafari, and uh, stay tuned. Shalom.